up and make some noise for Mr. Chris Berlick. I think everyone sort of refers to, to celebrities just in their lives. It's like, you know, it's like your, your friends are asking about someone and it's like, oh yeah, that's my friend who lo looks like Jeff Goldblum, or yeah, I've got an aunt who looks like uh, Sigourney Weaver from Aliens. And based on that premise, I'm comfortable with the fact that I look like if Harry Potter and Egon from the Ghostbusters had a bastard love child that they hated, that would be me. <laughs> I'm getting a little disappointed in something. The CNN website, like five or six years ago, it was like this bastion of serious journalism, entirely credible. And it's like these days you sort of look at uh, three random articles and it's like, oh, serious economics article. Oh, really heavy international politics article. Followed by an article with a headline that just says, are ugly babies harder to love? <laughs> and then you click on the link and it just says, yes. <laughs> I've uh, come to a conclusion about something. I've realized that if you're a geek, you're going to have a fairly hard time sealing the deal if you try to date. Like, odds are, you go out and date, and you bring her back to your apartment, aka Fort Awesome, <laughs> aka Battlestar Galactica, but cooler. She's not going to look around and be like, you got original Dreamcast, take me now, you autistic dreamboat. <laughs> Thank God these panties are side tie. You know, and ladies, I, I, I personally think the government should reward you. I think that I think your tax rebate should be directly proportional to the dorkiness of the guy you're dating. Like you go to a Star Trek convention and you pick up the 400-pound guy with the homemade tricorder and you actually fuck this man. The IRS shouldn't send you a bill. They should send you a pony and a thank you note. <laughs> I've got a weird job, you guys. I'm a video game critic because I've got the physique for it. Um, <laughs> waiting for puberty. Um, but the thing is, like, my parents want me to get a more normal job, like a 9 to 5 job, like an office job. I'm nervous about that from the perspective that your first day on the job is just like a more grown up version of your first day at school, where you walk in and your new boss is comparing you to everyone else and everyone's being described as a billion times more awesome than you, where it's like, new guy, new guy, welcome to the super team. Yeah, over there we got Carla, the single mother of seven, got our last kid through college, she's doing good. Over there's Dave, Iraq war vet, sent his platoon a shitload of times over to Crete. Yeah, new guy, tell us about yourself. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Chris. Back in third grade, I fucking caught Carmen San Diego. <laughs> Promote me! I've got a dream job, you guys. My dream job is to be a fireman, but then I realized that they're not looking for firemen like me. Like, they're not looking for the Caucasian Steve Urkel at this point. And I think where this fucks up the most was in, when it comes down to the uh, hunky fireman calendar they sell every year, where it, you know you, you flip over to one page and it's a shirtless, chiseled guy and he's single-handedly washing the company fire truck, and the sexy tagline is just like, "Get hot here, girl." Then you flip over to the next page and it's a really cut dude playing frisbee with the Dalmatian, and the sexy tagline is just like, "Get warmer now." And then you flip over to my page. And it's just me in a swimming pool with my shirt on, with floaties on my arms, I'm holding a pool noodle, and my sexy tagline is just, I listen. Alright, thank you guys, good night.